Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. So this vlog is going to be different. We're doing something we've never done before and we are going to, oh, I need to like confirm that that's what this vlog is because that'd be really bad if it wasn't. So yes, we are doing a swapping my screen time for reading time. Now I do use my phone for the Kindle app and Audible. So we're not going to count those times when we go here to my settings and we are going to click screen time and we, I need to like screen record this so y'all can see and see that I'm being honest with y'all. So right now, yeah, it does say zero because today is Monday. Now we want to see like last week. Can I see like last week? because I mean, I've been on um, more than 28 minutes. I don't know how to do this. Okay, so for this, the week, this is just starting from Sunday. How do I go back? This is like, am I dumb? <laughs> how do I do this? I don't know how you do this. So a daily average is four hours and nine minutes. And then as you can see, one hour and 34 minutes of those is information and reading. So that is not going to count. So I guess, do we just do this daily average of four hours and nine minutes and try to read for four hours and nine minutes today? I guess that's what we're gonna do. Hey, Penny, let me, let me show her. Here is Penny, let me cover that. Hello, hello, <laughs> she just woke up, but that's what so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna try to read four hours and nine minutes to a day or hold on we have to minus the reading time from that so 4.9 is that how i do this 4.9 minus 1.34 so we want to read three hours and 56 minutes today can we do that who knows i actually have read already today and did not count that but we're gonna go into the weekly TBR now. As I said, I did read today. I finished a short story today. Let me move it so I can see I did finish a book today. And I will be starting a new short story collection tomorrow. I, it was an essay collection that I just finished. But we will be starting Moonlight by Guy de Mupon. I'm probably saying that way wrong. I got this from the Shakespeare and Company subscription box and as you can see it's like a penguin cloth bound very nice and since it did come from shakespeare and company we do have a stamp in it this book came all the way from paris so this should take me about a week to read to read like a short story a day so let's see what the linda who is a staff member at um shakespeare and company has to say so a guy named Mo Mupont is considered a master of the short story and this compelling collection of seven of his best showcase so showcases perfectly why he is held in such high esteem ranging from the romantic happiness to the creepy the horla don't read this one at night or alone or in a haunted house these stories and an excellent translation by Sion Maus will have you breathless, breathlessly turning pages desperate to know what happens next so i will be starting this tomorrow i don't know what language i assume french because that name just looks french it just says translated by the one person so i don't know but we'll be starting that one tomorrow and then we have my tbr pick that is a buddy read and we had our first discussion last night and it was so much fun because i have not had like a successful buddy read in years and it's so fun to read a book and discuss it with somebody else and all of that because he's way ahead of me and uh, because i'm a really fast reader and so he just went ahead and started it so he could be caught up with me and we so he's like 400 pages into this one i'm like 150 and this is The Four Winds by Christian Hanna, by the way. I'm doing the audiobook and following along in the physical book. So this is During the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl. Oh my gosh, guys, I did not know like anything about the Dust Bowl. It was brutal. Like it scares me big time. It just what gives me major anxiety. So this is following a family in the panhandle of Texas back in, we're in 1935, I think at where I'm currently at in the story, but the story starts out in 1921. We have Elsa who is, I compared her to Gypsy Rose Blanchard. 
that she was sick at a young age. I don't know. I don't remember what exactly she was sick with, but she, she, the doctor said her heart was weakened. So her family really just like kept her inside. She didn't, go, she had to quit school. She couldn't go out and do a lot. She would just go on errands every now and then. And so she was very much like locked away from the world. And so she, um, the story starts when she's 25 and she's been living like this for years, for over a decade. And she wants romance. She wants to see the world. She wants to feel beautiful because that's another thing where she often feels like the ugly duckling of her family. And that she, so she feels like she's ugly. She thinks she'll never fall in love, that she'll never have a husband, never have a family, like have kids. And then she does. She meets a man and ends up in a quick marriage with him. And then we do a time jump to 1934 and the Dust Bowl is happening. The Great Depression is happening and it is so brutal, as I said. And there is another note. Yeah, I, this book makes me feel really claustrophobic, really anxious. I'll just read y'all. Um, some notes so I yeah there's a big age gap in this which I didn't expect um, with a woman being older you don't really see that in literature that often and then women are powerful <laughs> no like duh, I knew that but when people like back in the day they didn't go to like the hospital to give birth and all. I'm like, everybody just knew what to do. And that blows my mind. And then I was like, I feel like even now, like if it comes to it, you can do it. Like I, like, I feel like I could help somebody. Please never ask me for help though. But like, I feel like it's this instinct that motherhood and everything. And that just blows my mind. And then, yeah, I didn't realize dust storms are so powerful. I'm from somewhere that I was telling my friend who I'm doing the buddy read with. I'm in coastal South Carolina. It's very lush. We have water everywhere. And I have seen drought years where we've gone weeks and weeks without rain. But for like now, we have rain every single week. And I cannot imagine dry, dusty, what dust can do. Like, um, my friend mentioned there was a part where they're like putting paper in the windowsill so dust doesn't come in. And he said, I think the movie Interstellar, where like in that movie they have to flip cups over and everything so dust doesn't get in it. And they have to do that in this, in, in the Dust Bowl. And yeah, I had no idea it was so powerful. And yeah, I didn't really learn about this much in school. Um, in my modern history class, we did get to where we were supposed to, like World War II and all. But since I am in South Carolina, I feel like we didn't really touch on this so much. And my camera's dying. So then I'm reading Creatures of Passage, which I'm loving. And A Breath of Snow and Ashes by Diana Gabaldon. We'll talk about these more later. I am going to do my update on the four winds for y'all. I got to 66% and that was 152 pages read. So definitely need to put that in my journal here. Where is the page? Where is my bookmark? Okay. We read 152 pages, and I need to write that I'm reading this. The Four Winds. I don't know what that title means. Now that I think about it, I don't. I don't. I don't know. But lots of tabs. I think I don't know if I would have this many tabs. So I, if I wasn't doing a buddy read, yo, I'm having so much fun doing a buddy read. I know I was like really excited about it earlier talking about it, but I'm still super excited and having a lot of fun. So I have my notes here that I'm going to tell y'all. So Loretta, who is the Elsa's daughter, she's like 13 years old, insufferable. <laughs> she's just so different than she was in what I read yesterday. And I was like, I don't know. And my friend was like, no, you need to put it into words and tell me <laughs> what you think is different. He didn't say it like that, but that's essentially and I'm I'm glad because I I need to put thoughts into words because I get mad when people don't do that. So I get that she went through all this trauma, but it's like she has hit a 180 and there's only negative traits that there are no positive traits of her whatsoever. And I have read characters who have gone through hard times. Y'all know my favorite book is The Love Songs of W. E. B. Du Bois. 
brutal, brutal book. But I didn't hate the characters. They, I didn't think they were insufferable. Then my next one is, I think this book is very relevant um, compared to people immigrating from the Mexican border and how those people are treated. Now this is people coming from states like Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas, they even said Alabama, I didn't even realize that, um, going out west to California and the Californians were very standoffish. They were like, you don't pay taxes here so you don't need to be at our PTA meeting. You can't give birth in this hospital because you don't pay your taxes in California. And these are your good Christian people who are turning these migrants away. And I'm, and there's one point when Elsa tells the woman at the hospital, she's like, can you not be human? My best friend is giving birth right now and you're turning us away? Oh my gosh, it's like in the Bible, they turned Mary away when she needed to give birth, but that was because like the hotels had no rooms or whatever, but still some kind of concept. And that's so true. I don't think about it a lot. I, sh I probably should think about it more about how people don't treat the immigrants coming from Latin America. And I know there's ones coming from like people are like Africa and China as well. I don't know how true that is. I have not been to the border, I can't tell you. But we do not treat those people like humans. And you can be like, the cartels are busting them in. Okay, how many of those thousands of people are criminals. I think the majority of the people in this world are good people. Like 97% of the population of the globe, I think are good people. So yeah, it just blows my mind. These like good Christians I see on Facebook who don't treat these people like humans. Crazy. And I, th as I said, this is American treating other Americans like that. So I mean, yeah. And then I think there is a cycle of characters. So both of the children, Aunt and Loretta, they look like their dad, but I see so much of their mom in them. The way that Loretta is a dreamer, and we'll get to that in a little bit. And then Aunt is more on the physical side where he's kind of sickly and that kind of thing. But that is, he's sickly because of the environment he was around where his mom was more so it happens you know you get sick then the main theme here I talked about this with my friend last night when we talked on the phone is the main theme is the American dream and there's different variations of that American dream we had Loretta and Ray Fu they really dreamed of like Hollywood uh New York City and you know those kind of big dreams of seeing the world and then you had dreamers who were like Ralph's parents the Martinelli's um Rose and Anthony who their dream was to come to America from Sicily to get a better life for our lives for themselves and have their son go to college and all of that. And that is also the American dream in a sense. And it's how the American dream can be so different for everybody. And do you guys think the American dream exists today? I did a paper on that before and I I cringe when I think about the paper I wrote because I would just do it completely different now. And this so that's a question for y'all to answer in the comments. And then this book can be hard to read as a dreamer. I'm definitely a dreamer. And dreaming can be dangerous. That's a common theme here that my friend pointed out that the kind of dreams that Rafe and um, Loretta have are dangerous. Escapism, um, not wanting to deal with the world that they're in, not really thinking about surviving and being kind of selfish. And it can be hard to read as somebody who I, I think those are the characters that I'm more like. And yeah, so that's the four wins. And then I am still reading Creatures of Passage and uh, I don't know if I'm gonna give this a five star like I necessarily thought that I had previously thought because I had all that time that I, I haven't read it in a few days because busy and then um, y'all know I was medicated last week. So I, I read some of this when I was medicated but I didn't trust myself to read this so I would remember what I read. And I, yeah, <laughs> but what what is this about? So this is a magical realism set in um, the Anacostia area of Washington DC in the late 1970s. 
we have a lot it's basically of death what death does and the passage of death um when you die where do you go and again it's magical realism so it's really confusing to describe but yeah the impact that death has i think is the main one um in good ways bad ways killing the bad guys the good guys getting killed and it, it's a lot um definitely looking the trigger warnings for, for picking this i mean i think reading about death is pretty dark as it is but um our one of our main characters dash she witnesses a girl in his class being molested and that is one of the main um things going on here and he doesn't really understand what he saw and just the innocence of childhood how it can be taken and yeah the writing is fantastic but i do get confused a lot with it and then my ebook pick is still a breath of snow and ashes by diana gobbledon but i'm such an outlander kick right now i um met somebody the other day and we started talking about outlander and I'm like, yeah, you got me on an Outlander kick. She was sending me memes from the show and all of that. I don't think she's read the books. She said one of her friends is reading the books, but I'm going to have to ask if she's reading them. And yeah, she got me on an Outlander kick. And um, I was listening to the soundtrack when I went to get lunch today. And I was looking at gifts of, I cannot remember the actor's last name, but William Ransom, that character. Yeah. <laughs> um crush there but yes so i'm on a really big outlander kick but this is such um the days leading up to the american revolution and all that this family goes through leading up to that that's everything i'm reading because i know i can finish telling y'all my tbr earlier gonna throw my glasses back on here i've been talking for eight minutes again i've been very talkative today i'm sorry if that's annoying <laughs> Not really, because that that is what the, I'm here. That's what I'm here to do. I'm here to make a video for y'all. But I it's 8:54, <laughs> so I'm gonna chill for six minutes watching BookTube. I'm gonna watch Liv's Library. Is that her name? She is super sweet. She's so sweet. Um, her spring TBR. I'm going to watch that video at least like six minutes of it, and then get into Creatures of Passage. And for where we are on time, I am about two hours into our her swapping screen time for reading time and we will just see with all my reading where we get to hey guys it is tuesday and we are about to see how long i should be reading today um or at least our like goal or whatever so Sorry, I just brushed my teeth and there was some water. Our goal today is three hours and three minutes. So I do think that is definitely possible because yesterday, I do need to update y'all. Y'all would have seen already. I read for two hours, 31 minutes and 6.56 seconds. So this is only about 30 more minutes more. And I obviously do think that is doable. And I already have read today because I read a short story. So I've read for eight minutes today, but we are about to go outside and get into the four winds. I do plan on finishing this today. I definitely forgot to tell my friend who I'm doing the buddy read with that I plan on finishing this today. So I do need to text him. I started the movie Napoleon last night. The, what's his name? Joaquin Phoenix. I don't know how you say his name, but I, so that's a three hour long movie, two hours and 41 minutes. My Wi-Fi went out 32 minutes into the movie. So I, I only watched that much because I was planning on watching an hour a day because it is so long and I just, I don't want to give that time to a movie. And this was my first movie of the year. I know insane that I haven't watched a movie yet. I just, every movie I want to see is like three hours long and I just, I have to give that amount of time and y'all know I've been exhausted lately. Luckily I have got my energy back, um, which obviously is super exciting. So hopefully me going outside doesn't like drain it because of all the pollen. Um, yeah, but that, that's a side note, sorry. But so I, start, I, I started that and I plan to watch an hour of it tonight. But I did start the show Manhunt on Apple. I'm in my Apple era. And that is about John Wilkes Booth, the manhunt for him. And he 
if you don't know, that's the guy who killed Abraham Lincoln. And one of my favorite books is Booth by Karen Joy Fowler. So I was instantly intrigued that there's a show going on about John Wilkes Booth. We had Tobias Menzies, trust that man with my life, great actor. Then Will Harrison, who I like him. And so he's on it. And then all the other people, I don't know them. But, you know, we're start, we start a new show. <laughs> like, do I need to be doing that? No, because I'm already watching like three shows. But I did start that during my lunch today. And there's one more episode um, that's out right now for me to watch, which I will probably do that at lunch tomorrow because I don't work on Wednesdays. So that'd be a great time to watch that. But it is, yeah, 2.58. So I am going to head out and start reading. I'm probably butchering how you say this, but those helicopters that are like long with the two propellers, a China is coming. I never see these things. It's Harry 25. It's just code, code name, call sign. Yeah, call sign. So I'm out here hoping to see this because I only see these things like once a year. It's so loud. Under feet. Okay, okay, guys, it's coming, it's coming, it's close. <laughs> there it is, there it is. Sorry, I don't want to focus. Okay, guys, I was recording, then I caught this random plane. It's over there. But I can't even see with my bare eyes. What is happening? UFO. So cool though. So I'm not sure what plane it would have been. I'm assuming this one, American Airlines, Fort Lauderdale to Charlotte, or even this Provincals to Charlotte. I did not know my camera was doing that good because literally I cannot even see, like I can't even see the China with my eyes at that point. So let's just zoom in on this plane here, which this is the one from Provincals. Again, I have no clue how to say that. Y'all, look at that. Wow. Okay, guys. Is there hair all in my face? No, but it is time for me to review The Four Winds. This is going to be extremely hard to review because there were great things. There were terrible things all about this book. So I ended up giving it a four star. When I did call Pow, it was a 3.85. So the four wins, let's, I'm going to read, I'm going to tell y'all what I put in my reading journal and then we'll go like, you know, y'all know how we do this. So, oh, hold on. I need to stop my timer for, um, that I finished reading. I did not do that. My bad. So we've read for two hours and five minutes. So I'd like to read for another hour today, but this is the four wins by Christian Hanna. It's historical fiction. My Three words I would use to describe their atmosphere, dreams, and annoying. I give it a four star. I did the audiobook. It was published in 2021 and I read it from March 17th to March 19th of 2024. Characters, I gave a three star. <laughs> Which is so hard to believe because I feel like in her other books, but it's been years since I've read Christian Hannah. I think since 2018 or 2019, whatever year The Great Alone was published, I think is when I um, last read Christian Hanna. So it's been a while. And I feel like the characters in those, like I've, I was telling my friend who I buddy read with, The Nightingale is the first book that ever made me cry. First book ever to do that. So that's very impactful. Um, but with these characters, so we're gonna start with Elsa because she's the first one we're introduced to. Elsa at the start of this book in the first part when we're in the 1920s so relatable so relatable of uh, she is seeing herself as a spinster she's 25 and um, still lives at home isn't married same she loves to read she has dreams of falling in love having a family just the basic things like that she dreams of because she doesn't have that and the character development we see with that character, 
fantastic of where she is by the end of this. Oh my gosh, Asenia, we went on a journey with her. A journey. There were some parts where she made me extremely angry, but still, her character work was fantastic. Seeing, oh, it just blows my mind. Seeing all that we went through with her. Um, to, yeah, I don't want to spoil. Um, but yeah, how, so we see her going from that life of being, oh, I want to talk about how she's really insecure because of what people who are supposed to love her, things they said to her, and I can honestly relate to that so much. Um, and there was one part where she's like, that sticks with you forever. And it's a mirror. You're, you're going to be thinking it about yourself. And that's why, guys, if you ever have negative thoughts about somebody's looks and it's something they can't change in five seconds, don't tell them. Don't tell them. I, I was thinking about this last week before I picked up this book was just because some things that people have told me, they ruined um, my perception of myself and how I go about my relationships with other people and all of that. Um, and I'm not even just talking romantic relationships where I'm only scared of what somebody thinks of me based on my looks. And yeah, and there was a time where um, she talks to her friend Jean about how she's very bad at accepting compliments. And um, because she, yeah, she, she she had been told all these negative things and yeah people can tell you all those compliments and yeah I, I don't think I have trouble accepting compliments but yeah I thought that a lot of people can relate to her as a character but then we have her daughter Loretta I hated Loretta she was insufferable she's the reason why I was like I am not liking this book I wanted to end I am so freaking annoyed <laughs> And that's the closest I'm getting accustomed to Liz. She annoyed me so much. So when she's first introduced, I was like, yep, she's fine. She's fine. I don't have any strong opinions. But as the story progresses, she has no positive traits whatsoever. None at all. I mean, I guess she's courageous and a determined person, which I think are such important qualities to have. But no, no, she was poorly written. And I don't know how Christian Hannah, because Christian Hannah's written other, my bookshelf is behind y'all, that's what I'm pointing at, has written other ch ch child characters, children characters, and I didn't have any strong feelings like hate towards them. I, I just, I hated Loretta. I hated her. And how she was so angry, which is understandable. She's going through the Death Bowl and the Great Depression, but there was no positive traits with her character at all atmosphere fantastic especially in those dust bowl chapters i felt anxious i felt claustrophobic and i don't even know it's strange to say feeling claustrophobic in the plains because the plains look like they go on and on and on if you've ever driven through texas you know it just goes on and but i can also see you're in that same landscape forever and ever and ever it can feel claustrophobic but I didn't really think when I was reading it, I didn't really think much and then when my friend started talking about it, he's like how do you feel about the atmosphere and I was like oh my gosh you're right this atmosphere is amazing I gave it a five star for that it was yeah it the emotions it made me feel how I as I said this book feels like hell even when we get to the parts that um they're in a camp it floods, there's typhoid, dysentery, it's disgusting. This book is literal hell on atmosphere. Writing, um, no strong opinions on the writing. I literally have like two writing tabs and they're for the atmosphere. So the writing was fine. I think I gave the writing a three star. Um, yeah, I did. So plot, five out of five. Plot was great. This, I definitely do think this is more of a plot driven book. It's very, it's a mix, but I do think it is more plot heavy than character heavy. The, there's so many ideas presented. I think motherhood and the instincts that come with it. I think that is a big one. I think this book is so relevant today. This was written in the early days of the COVID pandemic, if you read the author's note, and how in America and in the world, we go through bad things, but we only just come out. We only just get out of it, but it's only going to happen. That's history. And 
I think this is really relevant. She didn't mention it on the back, but to how people treat the immigrants coming from Latin America, that they don't review them as humans. And it, it blows my mind how they can just treat people the way I see things. I see people say online and all of that. I don't get how you can say things about people you've never met in your life. I don't know. So I think this book is very relevant for that. And I'm kind of scared to put that in my review on the Facebook group, the Historical Fiction Facebook group, because I'm like, I don't know if I can have politics in here or not, because I don't really think it's... I, I'm just going to be very, like, a little, little bit about that. And then the biggest theme is dreams, the American dream. I told y'all the American dream has so many variations, and we see those variations throughout the novel. We have... Um, Roth and um, Loretta who have those dreams of Hollywood and seeing the world and the glitz and glam that life can have. And then you have Elsa who dreams of love, she dreams of just having a family and being secure in life. We had the Martinelli's, um, Anthony and Rose, who they dream of sending their son to college. Um, dreams of their farm po prospering and just having a better life in America than they had in Sicily. And I, I think dreams are the essence of this novel and what it's about. And then um, Intrigue, I gave a four because I really had no idea where this book was going to go. Logic, I gave a three because Loretta, there were just some instances in this where she, yeah, towards the end of the book, I can't really say a lot because it's really spoilery with the character development and um, just plot in general. Yeah. And then my enjoyment, I, it felt like a four star. So that is what we're rating it. We're rating it a four. But I had so much fun with this, getting to buddy read it and discuss it with somebody. So definitely, if y'all ever have the chance to buddy read with somebody, take it. I'm so glad that my friend offered to do a buddy read with me and we do plan on doing more in the future which should be a lot of fun but I need to go take pictures for bookstagram I need to write my review I did eat my dinner already had some she crab soup which was really good and yeah so I will see y'all later I forgot some of the basic things I do so I just use this book of the month bookmark as a plain one and then tomorrow we will be starting a new book and continuing a series with the she wolf by Murdy Struan <laughs>
So I am going to read a little bit now and then at six really get into the reading. I just got done reading in the She Wolf, is that what it's called? Yeah, the She Wolf for the day. So it's given three star vibes. I am 35% into the book. I'm trying to read, you know, a third a day. That's what I do. And I will tell you all my notes because I don't think any are too spoilery. So as I said, I liked the how we had the prologue at the start because it basically went in all the events that you need to know before going into this one because this is the fifth book in the series. And sometimes you need a little refresher and I wish more books would do that. I would benefit so much from that. And then we have a character tab. So about Isabel, Isabella, it's, you know, depends on who you talk to. So I think Isabella is what the book says. Yeah, Isabella is a princess of France, queen of England. And I never realized how hard it must be for her because so much is happening back home in France. Her dad dying, brothers dying, and sister-in-laws being kind of crazy, and other in-laws being wild, and just rebellion, and all this stuff happening in France. It must be crazy for her because she is stuck in England. She is stuck on this island across the sea from them, and is kind of stagnant when all this stuff is happening because she's in a loveless marriage. Her husband is gay and she, so she's stuck. She's very much stuck. And I never really thought of how difficult it must be for her. And then there was a quote that I loved. The Italian plot lines, I didn't put this note in here, are my favorite. I definitely, I've always liked Guccio. He's always been my favorite character. He hasn't been a POV yet though, but th this is coming from his uncle. So everyone under 60 seemed young to him, astoundingly young. How much they still had to do, how many emotions still to suffer, battles to find, and ambitions to realize, how many mornings they would see that he would never know. How often these two men would awaken and breathe the air of a new day when he himself was under the ground. I think, um, especially with those Italian plot lines, we see um, age is a big theme. And then I have a general tab because the Viscontis of Milan got mentioned and they are one of my hyperfixations. And then I have two writing tabs. So in this book, there's been a lot of lists, lots of names. And for me, that can just be tiresome to read. And with names, I am lucky I tab down the character guide really that has all of the characters in the in this book. They're all listed here and who they are. And then there is a family tree as well. So I did tap those down. But if, if that was not there, I would honestly be so confused. I'm only so thankful when books have character lists. And then the atmosphere feels a lot like a movie. Like it's really easy to picture in my head. I do think it would be better as a TV show than a movie. I, I, I'm pretty sure this has been adapted. This was published way back in the day, um, 1955. So I would say it's probably been adapted in that time, but it does very much feel like you're watching something. And I only seen this great while reading, but I'm gonna go get my dessert, some ice cream. And I don't know if I'll see y'all again tonight, but I will see. Starting a new puzzle. Again, I know nothing about puzzle brands or anything, but this one is Spring Pop. Get a basket full of spring, a 500 piece. These little chicks, they're so cute. I'm going to start it now. Hey guys, happy Thursday. I feel like the lighting is kind of like shifting. It's this sunset time of day, you know, so nothing I can do about it. Maybe I could. I don't know. I don't know how lighting works. But today we are trying to read two hours and 12 minutes. And when I started that I was like that doesn't seem like that much. But right now I'm only an hour and 19 minutes into it. So I know that's a little less than an hour but I really don't know if I will get to the two hours and 12 minutes. But yesterday was my biggest day of the week with two hours and 45 minutes read. So by statistically by what we've done earlier in the week I should be able to do it but I'm just kind of worried but I read 155 pages in the She Wolf today I don't have a lot of new thoughts this was series it's harder to update y'all because 
I don't want to spoil anything. And then, yeah, I don't, I'm really tired right now. I do have some caffeine that I got for lunch, but I am still pretty tired. And I did have one tab in here that I will read to y'all. A quote that I liked. I like all the old main characters. No, Ptolemy, Ptolemy, I don't know how to say his name. He's been my favorite character in this, but my favorite character, Guccio, he has made an appearance. So I'm super happy about that. But was not a name, the very symbol of a man's existence and of his individuality. Hard word to say, but the vaster wilds, that quote reminded me of that book. So still pretty much the same thoughts as yesterday, but I did want to come on here and say how much I've read today and what the plan is of how many hours we want to read today. And then I did start the puzzle, y'all saw. I haven't actually started. I've been sorting out the pieces, like putting like inside pieces on, on one side of my table, putting the edge pieces on another side of the table. But the hockey game is starting in four minutes. And I tried a new barbecue place today um, because they were doing like a charity thing. The barbecue was great. The sides tasted pretty bland. And I'm like, how do you make rice and red gravy bland? And how do you make green beans bland? The mac and cheese was fine, but the, those two sides I just said were kind of bland. I'm not gonna say what restaurant it was because it is like a small business and I don't believe in leaving bad reviews for small businesses because they're trying. And yeah, I just think it's rude to do that. I've seen people do that and I'm like, screw y'all <laughs> no i'm joking but wow that, that was me in my life oh i painted my nails today that's something i did today i haven't painted my nails in like three weeks because i've just been busy on thursdays but i i listened to fake nails but i couldn't find them so if y'all remember when i did that haul where i put them let me know so i just painted them green because march green i didn't really know what to do for easter and i am wearing green today i typically don't dress up on thursdays but i had to go pick up a prescription. So I, when I go out, I dress up. So I'm going to go heat up some of my leftover barbecue and get to watch some TV. That reminds me, I did finish Napoleon and that movie is by no means a masterpiece, but I loved it. It was so chaotic and it was comedic to me. I don't know if it's supposed to be, but I think it's very Shakespearean. Like I think Shakespeare would have loved that movie. I, I'm sure y'all have seen the quote where it's like Franz Kafka, you would have loved Lana Del Rey. It's like Shakespeare, you would have loved Napoleon by Ridley Scott. <laughs> I did have a lot of fun with it. And then I still haven't watched Manhunt. Need to get on that. And then I randomly watched the first episode of Dairy Girls or rewatched. I've probably seen it a ton of times, but because my friend started watching that and I was like, okay, while I eat my lunch, because the episodes are only like 20 minutes, I'll watch Dairy Girls. So I might start doing that when I eat just to have something on, something short. I know Riley Marie does that. And then it's, yeah, that show's probably one of my comfort shows. It's just the sense of humor and dialogue. It's fantastic. And it hits the nail on the head of being a teenage girl. Like their friend group reminds me so much of my friend group when I was that age. And it's great. I love it. Guys, I'm going to be ending the vlog here. And as I've been doing, I will put whatever time I got to after this clip. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you would like to see more of these, let me know in the comments below. And as always, comment, rate, and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that notification bell to be notified when all my videos go live. And if you made it through this whole video, leave any kind of Easter comment in the comments below, maybe a bunny. But I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.